that. Looks like there's people who already beat me in. Well, welcome everyone to. <laughs> it wouldn't be the Hemingway Jones Pen Show without at least one technical mishap. But I wanted a way to see your questions. So I'm not sure how to do that. That's the one area that I'm lacking. I hope you guys will bear with me. But first, let me say, my name's Hemingway Jones. Welcome to our little corner of the internet where we talk about pens, inks, journals, and journaling, and just about everything and anything that's going to keep you inspired. So welcome to the show, everyone. Somebody hit me with a question. I want to see what they look like so that I can see whether or not I can follow them. I was hoping to uh, stream them off to my left. I have my other computer, but um, that was not to be. Oh, there we go. I can actually see your questions. So Wolverine says, hello. I'm ready to participate in the live chat. Ten minutes to go while well, I'm here now. Hey, Waffle, how are you? Nice to see you on here my new place to do lives. I'm really excited to do lives here at YouTube. I find that this is a really nice format. It's it's a nice setup. I certainly have some things to learn to make it a little better. So um, expect improvement. I'm always working on things, always trying to give you guys the best experience I can in everything I do, including my content. And, I must say, guys, I have some pretty exciting stuff coming up I think you're all going to appreciate. Hey, Michael, how are you? Nice to see you on here. I see some of the usual suspects are here, all my uh, favorite people in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, let me just tell you that we have a very active comment section. Hello to you. I, I, I just missed the name, but nice to see you. and everyone that's here thank you so much for joining us so i wanted to tell you guys um a couple of things that i'm planning okay um one of which is a sort of discovery video where i try an architect architect nib for the first time i've never had an architect nib and i just got one from Fountain Pen Revolution. They did a partnership with Ranga Pens out of India. Fountain Pen Revolution, they make their pens mostly out of India, I believe, if not all. And I'm going to film me opening, unboxing, appreciating this Ebonite pen, and then filling it, and then trying out an Architect nib for the first time. So I'm super excited about that. That's coming up. So I see a, a very particular question here. These are the kind of questions I really like. So you have a Twisby Eco, which I think you all know, I am a huge fan of the Twisby Eco. Um, it's an extra fine, which I've never tried the extra fine. And um, you have, okay, dark blue, document dark blue, and it's more like a fine. Oh, okay, so yes. So what you're saying is that it, your Twisby nib feels very wet. To you and you're trying to slow it so there's a lot of things that go into this like first off Twisby nibs are very wet they are very smooth nibs there's not a lot of feedback so I would say that you could try that but remember also that the paper has a lot to do with it as well so it's always hard when you're trying to take your foot off the throttle it's almost easier to get a nib to write more wet than it is to try to pare one back. But I think if you experiment with some different ink types, and if you also, forgive me for turning my back, if you also kind of play with some of your papers, you should be able to get the right combination that's going to work for you and what kind of feel you're looking for. But keep in mind, those Twisby nibs, they are... Fast, smooth, slick nibs, which is one of the things I love about them. So, 
So Wolverine is thinking of getting a Ranga pen too, a Model 58. Yeah, the big one. That is a gorgeous pen. Have you guys seen these Ebonite pens with the multicolors? I mean, they're so gorgeous. And I'm a big fan of Fountain Pen Revolution. One of my uh, big disappointments in the pen world is the Pilot Falcon. And I think I'd get a lot more flack from you guys if you didn't know how much I love Pilot. So... I think the Pilot 823 is nearly a perfect, a nearly perfect um, pen. And I think the Pilot E95S is probably one of your best, if not the best, first gold nibs because it's at a great price point. Plus, it's interesting. And I think if you're going to buy a gold nib, it should be interesting. It should have some of the characteristics of a gold nib that would make you seek it out because otherwise you may as well just use steel because they both have a lot of overlap in, in softness and, and a lot of other things. So it's a really interesting nib on that Pilot E95S, but the e extra fine Pilot Flex nib is such a disappointment to me and for nearly what i mean what's that pen go for uh, 175 180 dollars feels kind of plasticky it's just not a favorite of mine at all so i prefer the fountain pen revolution himalayas versions one and two as well as the blue do which you may have seen my flex pen uh episode where i featured the blue do which is a fantastic pen, a very, very good value. So, so this is nice. I got the setup right. You're actually in the library with me. I just recorded a new um, video that will probably go live in September. I'm kind of a few months ahead in how I post, unless I decide to post it in the interim or move things around. So I'd like to have a nice bank of um, videos ready to go. So one of the things I am concerned about, though, is what am I going to do in February when I'm recording here in icy New England? And if I'm two months ahead, I wouldn't want them coming out at the end of April. So I'm going to have to make an adjustment for that. So it's good stuff. So Waffle, Waffle mentions how uh, Fountain Pen Revolution has huge sales. So, yes, you know, that's the thing. A lot of these brands have sales or they'll give you coupons if you sign up for their newsletter. I mean, if you go to them, you often get at least 10, 15% off um, on your first purchase. I think the Fountain Pen Revolution is a fantastic pen. And by the way, I wrote Kevin to just, you know, get some questions answered because I like to give you guys the inside perspective on things. And I just asked him, like, can you just sort of give me the lowdown on this pen and, you know, in your philosophy in general and that sort of thing. So he sent me a very nice email and I'm sure he doesn't know me from anyone walking on the street. So it was very kind of him to take time out and fill me in so that I can fill you guys in once I record that video. So that's something you'll probably see in mid-September. It's still in the package. It's right there. I have a whole box of pens. Um, over there, there's a, um, a Monte Verdi over there. There's a, uh, what's the other one? I don't know what the other one is. There's another pen over there I haven't opened. Now those, the Monte Verdi and the other one who's, oh, it's a Narwhal. It's a Schuylkill, which is fantastic considering I'm from Philadelphia. So there's a Narwhal, a Schuylkill, um, Schuylkill by Narwhal. And then there's a Monteverdi over there. And um, they were, um, I guess, gifts or promo items from uh, Atlas Stationers out of Chicago. So very nice partnership with them over on TikTok. Not here. He doesn't know anything about my YouTube. So I can share that with you guys over here and uh, get into a lot more depth. A lot more depth. So let me take a look at some of your questions because that's kind of why I'm here. Wolverine asks about Sibley. Am I a bird watcher? I actually am. I'm really into birds. We have quite a few here. I think Sibley's right, right there, right? And um, Sibley actually himself doesn't live too far from where I live. He lives in the next town over, more or less. And um, 
I am a huge fan of birds and very specifically woodpeckers and raptors. So I love owls. We have quite a few owls here. I'll tell you guys a bit about where I live. So I live, you know, it's a suburban area, but it's sort of quasi rural because we're at the edge of this suburban neighborhood. There's a train station that's about a mile away, so you can get into Boston quite easy. But we're right at the edge of a vast track of conservation land. So there's all sorts of creatures that populate our yard, which um, is pretty interesting. We get everything from fisher cats to, um, of course, deer to, we don't get bears. Fisher cats are probably the scariest. All sorts of owls though, great horned owls, screech owls. Um, we see the occasional barn owl and um, a lot of pileated woodpeckers and all sorts of things. So it's a lot of fun living here, but you're constantly fighting nature from taking over. So if you leave something outside, something's going to eat it, move into it, or have babies in it. There's really nothing you can do. So that's the downside. And it looks like Michael lives in a similar area. Good for you. It's, it's a lot of fun though, especially for me because I'll give you sort of like tidbits of my life as we go along. I'm a city guy. I'm from Philadelphia originally. I moved to New England around a generation ago. Can I say that? 25 years or more ago. And um, I went from living in the Philadelphia area to living in Boston. I lived in Harvard Square. I lived in Cleveland Circle. I lived in um, Harvard Square again, um, Porter Square and um and then made the move out to the suburbs which was pretty radical for me but um now i'm enjoying it I was, you just um evicted a raccoon from the attic yeah that's scary we also get the occasional bats too which is um always uh interesting excuse me one second let's stay properly hydrated with um rosé wine this evening so in the pen world i have been just making content like crazy you guys as as people say right um mostly for youtube i consider youtube as my home now i find tiktok to just be too difficult to deal with it's um very unpredictable you don't you don't get a lot of like cause and effect on TikTok like you do on YouTube. I feel like if you put a really good, solid video on YouTube, it does well. Whereas on TikTok, it just seems very random. So I do consider YouTube as my home. So I'm very happy to be so well received here as I am over on TikTok. So, and it's been fun and I can get a lot more in depth here. So that is very, very, interesting for me because for about a year and a half guys well I guess it was about a year before I started the YouTube but I was doing 20 second pen reviews or 30 seconds and it's really liberating to go 20 minutes if I want to but the problem is uh, I don't want to go too long do you know what I mean like, I, I, I don't know where the sweet spot is, and maybe you guys can tell me in the comments. What are you more apt to click on? Would you click on something that's fewer than 10 minutes or fewer than 20? You certainly wouldn't want a pen review that's three minutes because you'd feel like you're not getting enough information. But where do you think that line is for you? You know, that would be interesting and helpful for me. I've been trying to aim for 12, 13 minutes, but then I always tack on about two or three minutes of classical music at the end with all the different images of pens and all the B-roll that I didn't use or some that I use that I like to use again and synchronize it with some beautiful music to keep you guys inspired because the idea is that fountain pens are a lifestyle. Fountain pens are a choice. They're like mechanical watches. No one needs a mechanical watch in 2022. You have your phone. No one needs a fountain pen either. Um, we do. But you can live your whole life now without writing. Even 
me as a banker. I can sign my name through DocuSign. So we do these things by choice. And when you take what is an outdated technology and you choose to use it, not just use it, but to make a hobby out of it and an academic pursuit even, I feel like it just takes it to the next level where it just becomes so much more satisfying and so much more interesting. So that's where we are. All right, let me check some of your comments here because this is about you and not me. All right, so you guys say, I think Michael Davis is saying, I think under 15 minutes is enough. We don't need measurements, et cetera. Run to know build quality in hand appearance and how well it actually writes. Michael, I'm glad you raised that point because it's something I've spoken about before. I... I don't watch a lot of other pen content. I really don't know what other people do, but I've watched some watch content. I know on some of the watch channels that get into some of the minutia of how many grams something is and how many millimeters something is in a certain way. And I think some of that's valuable because you know your own wrist and how things work. But I think it's better to, to get into the, the romance of it, how it feels, who you are when you write with it or wear it, who how it relates to something else that we all know, right? So a measuring stick like a Lamy Safari or a Mont Blanc 149, these sort of, uh, what would you call them, guidepost pens that each of us have a certain idea of. How does this relate to it? How does the 823 compare to the 149? That's actually a really great video idea. Somebody write that down for me, okay? So... I think that's more important than going into stuff like this pen is 148 millimeters long and, um, you know, weighs 30 grams and whatnot. Um, you know, it's just the way I look at it. So, okay, let me see what else you guys say. Linda Cooper says 15 minutes is good. Pat Wagner says a 20 minute video is a nice length and you do a terrific job creating them. Love your scenes and music. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. I'll say, guys, like, I do look at it almost like a show. And that's why I release it at the same time every week. Because I want you to have this episode of the Hemingway Jones pen show that you can consume some point at your leisure, probably over the weekend. You know what I mean? So... As a show, it has a certain format. I do deviate from the format, and you'll see a lot more deviations coming up. There's ones coming out very soon where the whole video is B-roll. Um, so that's going to be a little different. It's not just me talking at you. You'll still hear my voice. I pop up now and again, but most of the video is B-roll. And I think you're going to enjoy that, especially the topics. But I'm not going to say anything else because... I think it'll knock your socks off when you see it. So I don't want to spoil the surprise. So, yes, I do view it as a show. So I'm trying to be a bit more consistent with it. What I'm thinking, though, is you know, I keep an eye on the analytics. I think anyone who produces any kind of content keeps an eye on how things go and what the ebb and flow are of the numbers. It's almost like your Nielsen ratings, right? But it's in real time, actually it's a day delayed, but that's pretty good, of what you guys think and where you drop off on certain videos and that sort of thing. So what I am thinking is that I probably need some sort of counter programming that maybe once a week isn't enough because what I see is I release something on Thursday and the line goes like this where it looks like a lot of people watch what I put out on Friday and then a lot watch on Saturday and then a good amount watch on Sunday, and then everybody goes to work, and the number just falls off really, you know, dramatically, and then levels off through the week until a new video comes out. So it's sort of like an EKG of a fairly healthy person, so I don't feel too bad. But I imagine that perhaps I do a live, and this is, I'm still thinking, like either Monday night or Sunday night, I mean, Sunday nights are tough because I'm getting ready for my own week. I mean, I do have a full-time job that is my number one priority beside my family. And I spend quite a bit of time at that, too. So and this, this, this is a great hobby, but it does take a lot of time, right? But what I'd like to see is that line on Thursday, go to Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then maybe people check out the live, and it keeps the number a little higher um, tracking the other video keeps people a little bit more 
um, engaged and, and kind of dig in the content, maybe seeing a different side. Because if it's not entertaining to you guys, I'm sure you'll, you'll uh, find something else. There's plenty of other sources out there. So let me see what else we have here. Janet, 15 minutes really works well for me as a transition between daily projects. Yeah, see, I think that's good. So I do kind of aim for 13 minutes. And as I said, I put my moment of Zen at the back and then it ends up being 15, 16, something like that, right? So I think you guys are all pretty much in agreement with me that around 15 minutes really works, which is, which is really fantastic. So that's good. All right, let me ask you another question. So I'm actually asking you guys as many questions as you're asking me. Actually, I think I'm asking you guys more questions than you're asking me, although you're being very nice and answering them. So I am thinking of doing a pen organization video because if you guys watch my first pen collection video, I say in there that I have 40 pens. And that was last, I don't know, September? Well, since then, I've somehow, I've somehow lapped that. I'm somewhere in the mid 80s right now with pens. So um, it's been a, a very bountiful pen acquisition year. And most of those were given to me by people who were looking for promotions on TikTok. Still, it's a lot of pens. And there's some in family, um, if you will. So my pilots aren't all together. My fountain pen revolutions wouldn't be all together. My Twisbees are all together. But there's a few others that they're just not properly grouped. So I thought maybe I'd do a, a video of organizing them, briefly talking about them and putting them all away. How do you guys feel about that? Does that sound interesting? Um, Waffle thinks so, which is good. And yeah, and the reason is I have so many new pens to talk about, guys. It's been really amazing. By the way, how do you like this glass? I picked this up on Murano. It's um, it's a whole set. What's a shame? Or maybe it's not a shame. Maybe it's cool. It's gold, but it's really wearing away because it's, it's now about, I'd say, 15 years old since I picked this up. It was a trip from a while ago. So from all the hand washing, it's just wearing away. And I love stuff like that. Once it starts to patina, a little bit of wabi-sabi, it's sort of mine now, now that it's a, a bit distressed. So Linda Cooper digs the organizational video and mentions ink. You know, um, Linda, that's a really good point. I think I neglect ink, guys. I really do. I don't talk about it enough on this channel. I want to show you something. So I know YouTube sees this occasionally, but TikTok sees it a lot more. This is my ink library, I call it. And what it is is every time I buy an ink... I make a little swatch and then I write with it and then I write a review of what I think about it. And the swatch isn't sort of me saying like this is the exact color. The reason the swatch is there is that I like to, I like to take a pen and just hold it up to it and just see how I feel. See how I feel about it before I put it in there. And then I know that this part where I've actually written with it is what it looks like. So it's just a really valuable tool. And then there's just times when you look through and you go, oh man, I totally forgot about that ink. And I'll give you, here's an example. Redwood Forest and um, Coastal Coast Redwood by Colorverse. I mean, look at those great colors. I mean, I mean, how awesome are they, right? Or something like, um, you guys know I'm a big fan of Krishna, right? Well, here's Tesla Coil, all right? So say you want to compare Tesla Coil to Moonview. So keep that in mind. I'm going to show you Moonview now. And then I have, there you go. Moonview is probably the most awesome sheening ink there is, and Tesla Coil is a a second, a slightly distant second, but a second. 
But, I mean, I should do more ink content, don't you think? So, um, I did that one that's pretty popular still on Kunpeki. So, I should, I should readdress that. So give me a hard time in the comments on uh, my next video. Have I tried Diamine's Writer's Blood? I know you're an Oxblood, but Writer's has a more Merlot tone. Joe Colucci asks. Yes, I do and did. And I sort of swap them out sometimes. Writer's Blood to me, yes, it's slightly lighter. It's slightly less visceral. It's a little less... Um, bloody right a little less clotted if you will um maybe a little less dramatic but still brilliant and fun to use so yes i i have used it and i do i do like it waffle asks what's the biggest difference between a really expensive pen and one that could be cheaper you know what it is it really depends on the pen but broadly speaking, it's materials, brand markup, which cannot be underestimated. And I'm saying provenance, like history, right? Which I guess is part of brand markup. But it's a little bit more of a sort of sincere version of that, right? So... Some of it is rarity. So it depends on what makes it expensive. If it's a collector's limited edition, like some of the writer's editions that Mont Blanc put out, like the Hemingway pen, that's limited. It has a lot of um, desirability. But I think it's, it's something like comparing a Lamy Safari to a Mont Blanc 149, right? So the 149 has more expensive materials, R&D, and a whole lot of brand markup. So I would think that pen is probably worth around five or $600, which is what it goes for used. And if I were buying another one, I would buy it used. And I'd have to tell you guys, I actually bought a Mont Blanc 146 today. But that's a story for another time. So, a Lamy would be made in a factory, and it's brilliant, and it writes fantastic. The 149 is a little bit more hand-tuned, but I'm sure it's made in a factory too. Maybe the nibs are hand-tuned. And as I said, there's a whole lot of brand markup. But... The way I look at it is value is where you find it. So you have to make those choices for yourself. And I'll give you an example. The Mont Blanc Egyptomania came out. And you guys, I think you all know, or if you're just joining, you don't know. I'm crazy about Egypt. I just love, I love Egypt. I love when it was being discovered and how there was that wave of Egypt, Egyptomania. In fact... I keep this on my desk, um, a nice Egyptomania inkwell, which I'll actually be filling soon. I'm going to use it. So, um, I love Egypt. Had to have the pen. It was perfect for me. It's expensive. It goes, I think, for $9.75, $9.50, somewhere around there. My wife bought it for me. I think, um, I think it was Christmas. Lovely, lovely gift. But the pen goes back to how Mont Blanc made pens in the 20s. It has a soft nib that's flexible, but doesn't give you a lot of line variation. But the writing experience is intense. It has a scarab on the nib. It has a hieroglyph on it. It's got a brilliant piston fill system. It's just an awesome, interesting, wholly unique pen. So um, the cost of playing. If you want to play and you want that pen, is nine fifty, and I guess it was worth it to us because I bought that one. I mean, my wife bought that one, but um, it wasn't you know a gift or anything outside of the family. All right, let me see what you guys are saying. Oh, Al Cali's here saying twenty minutes is fine. Very cool. Nice to see you. Um, Carol Calavaro 
As mainly a journaler, do you find any merit in Sailor's dual shading inks? Um, yeah. Okay, let me say it this way, okay? I don't have the most experience with Sailor inks. I have a couple, and the ones I have are very pastel, or pastel, as my wife would say. She's British. And um, they get a bit lost on the page. They look like watercolors. They're lovely, but I don't think they're very good for writing. So they don't inspire me, guys. What inspires me typically are really dark colors. So even light greens, for instance, don't do it for me. Or take a purple, like Mont Blanc purple is like a lilac. It's lovely. It's not, not for me. I have it. I love it. I'm glad I own it, but I don't want to use it. Um, Imperial Purple by Diamine, which is really dark and intense. I love that ink. So that sort of gives you an idea, pardon me, of where I am with that stuff. But, um, I mean, they make fine inks, so it's not saying anything at all pejorative about it. So, Stargazer says... Your enthusiasm and joy would be my favorite thing about your channel. Thanks so much, my friend. I appreciate that. I, I do want to communicate um, my enthusiasm for these things, but it's also sort of uh, an evangelical movement here, right? Because we're trying to convince people to give these up, right? We don't want people, and you guys will get mad at me for even showing this, but we want people to give these up. And the reason I have this is so that I can make content. It's the only reason. I hate these pens. I hate ballpoint pens. I hate the idea of them. I hate the fact that something we hold, um, I mean, it sounds silly, but something we hold very dear, very sacred, like writing and the writing experience, has been reduced to the least common denominator, a hunk of disposable plastic that feels terrible and sometimes downright bendy in your hand with a nib that, well, it's not even a nib, it's a roller. What do you call it? A ballpoint, forgive me. That works when it feels like it. Um, and then people throw it away and it chokes a sea turtle, right? I mean, it's really awful. Now, you can argue that it's very democratic because it's a 25-cent item, right? But it would be more cost-effective to get someone into a $3 Jin Hao or a $6 Kakuno and have them refill it, I think. A little less damaging than this, so... So that's the basis of my enthusiasm. So thanks for that. Waffle says, not to Bic. I remember the video you made reviewing one and a bunch of people did not enjoy your opinion. Well, get ready for more because that's why I bought it. It's true. Um, people called me a snob, but it's not based on snobbery. Forgive me. Sometimes my voice gets a little strained when I talk too much. It'd be nice if we could have a conversation, then I could rest a little more, but I want to keep it interesting for you guys. So, um, it's not based on snobbery, it's based on the fact that these, these pens are just so poorly made. It's sort of like if you had cars that were made out of cardboard and the wheels fell off sometimes. Would it be snobbery to say that's not the best car? I don't think so. But feel free to disagree. I actually like when people disagree with me. It makes things more interesting. Matt Swanson says, I'm new to fountain pens, but I've managed to collect 10 pens at this point. Wow, good job. Good job, my friend. That's a lot. Most fancy is a Lamy 2000. Well, you know what? You don't need any other pens now. You're done, my friend. The Lamy 2000 is great. I feel compelled to get a Kaveco Sport. Should I? Yes, you should. <laughs> After I tell you that you don't need to buy any other pens. And I'll tell you why. There's a couple reasons about Kaveco. And you're going to see them on some lists I have coming out. So here's the beauty about Kaveco and the Sport in particular. It is one of the lightest pens out there and it's very protected. It's a great pen for just throwing in your bag and forgetting about until you need to use it. You won't feel the weight of the thing. You can have it in your pocket. You can put it in your car. And Kaveco's, you guys, Kaveco sponsors me over at TikTok, so I'll be totally transparent. They've given me probably around 10 pens, 
And um, I don't want you to feel like my opinion is compromised, though, because the thing that I love about Kaveco is I have so many of them that I don't write with all of them. But I do use them to make content. So my only double broad that I own is a Kaveco Sport. So um, they gave it to me last summer and I pulled it out to make a video recently. And I put the nib to paper and it has a cartridge in it. So what would you expect to happen? I mean, yeah, you expect it to write. But most of the time they don't, it, it, you would expect it to dry out and you really wouldn't be angry with it because I left the poor thing in the case, in my, my case, for a year without using it. Um, I actually like the pink one, that's why. But the green one is really cool and has a gold nib. But anyway, touch the nib to paper and it wrote with the slightest bit of pressure. It had instant alacrity. It sprung to life. It was so happy to be uncapped and in my hand. Everyone needs a Kaveco Sport. Those nibs are top tier. They're right up on the top shelf, right next to Johnny Walker Blue. They are fantastic nibs. So, as good as the Lamy 2000 is, and it is, Kaveco Sport is a whole different ball game. It's more of a rugged pen even the plastic versions get a little scratched you don't worry about it your Lamy you don't want it scratched that's sleek and interesting right so um, that's my view uh, I will say one thing bad about the Lamy 2000 for me I have trouble finding the uh, nib sometimes I have the same problem with the Parker 51 anything that's kind of hooded I have a hard time with and also to say a word about small pen collections my wife has a very small pen collection that's just extraordinary she has picked the most amazing pens and got right to the essence of great pens and I'm gonna tell you what they are I'm gonna to try to remember all of them I might miss one she has a Kaveco no she doesn't have a Kaveco she has a Lamy Safari um, in a beautiful mint green she has a pilot vanishing point in the blue carbon which is gorgeous that springy 18 karat gold nib fantastic she has a Chinese pen that's in a little cloth case and then when you open the case it looks like porcelain it's made out of metal but it looks like the kind of tea set you might see at a Chinese table it's just amazing and it's so wet and incredible to write with so that's essentially her pen collection and it's perfect it's like perfectly curated so Joe Colucci agrees that the spot can be a pain why he's selling a Parker 45 so and people dig the Kaveco nibs indeed they're really good Oh, Robin Allen. Hello, Robin. Nice to see you on. Recently got the Jinhao 159A with the number 8 nib. Another surprisingly decent pen for around $30. I feel bad because things like the Lamy 2000 Pilot 823 have been huge disappointments. Really? The 823 has been a huge disappointment to you? I'm so sorry to hear that, my friend, because like to me... That pen is brilliant. Just brilliant. I have the 159. The only negative thing I'll say, because I agree with you, it's actually really nice and it writes extraordinarily. And it also does quite a bit of line variation. I don't know, do you guys do this sometimes? You know how you write up and down where you trowel down your line to get a nice thick line and then your upstrokes are thin because you're hitting that part of the nib? Do you ever just turn your nib a little bit so you get a little bit more of a sort of off kilter um, line variation almost like you're making your own oblique well I do that with my Jin Hao 159 and it does a brilliant job here's the negative thing about it I'm a critic so I'm always gonna find really good stuff and really bad stuff and I want you guys to know this so the bad thing is it weighs like 50 pounds I mean it is one of the heaviest pens it's right up there I think my heaviest pen I think the Jinhao 159 is my heaviest pen. I was going to say that it's heavier than my Cartier 
Diablo, which is Chinese lacquer and brass, but I'm pretty sure that 159 has it beat. But it's thirty dollars, guys. I mean, everyone should have a bunch of Jin House. They're super fun, super fun. So I'm seeing some love out there for the 823. Sicario Kamazada asks, do you have a preferred USA retailer? I do. I recently have hooked up with Atlas Stationers in Chicago. They've sent me a bunch of stuff, um, you know, stuff to promote. But I've developed a really close friendship with Brendan over there. And uh, he's the generation that's taken taking over. It's been a family business since the 1930s. I think he's 26 or 28, somewhere around that, so he's a pretty young guy. He's very passionate about pens, and he's super fun to deal with. So um, if you run into some places where people seem disinterested, I went into a place recently, I won't say its name, um, and the staff there, and this was in person, were completely disengaged. They didn't want to answer any of my questions. They didn't want to talk pens or anything. But um, Brendan at Atlas has more energy and vitality and passion for pens even than I do. He just loves the stuff. So I think he's a, a super great guy to deal with. You can tell him I sent you. Uh, Neo. Neo. Neo and I have chatted quite a bit. It says, happy to see you streaming again. Thank you. Happy to be here. Uh, may I ask where you're from? I noticed you have a nice accent. Do I? Really? Some kind of American accent. Well, I'm American. I live in America. So, yes, it's, it's American. I, um, my accent is like a mix of my background my speech impediment, which you'll hear sometimes, um, me trying to be better for my daughter so she doesn't pick up any of my bad habits, and the influence of my wife, who has perfect diction, and maybe, you know, um, a sprinkle of pretension on top, and the fact that I do announcer's voice often when I'm broadcasting. Um, so that's my accent, although what you're getting now is my speaking voice. So, so there you go. That's me in a nutshell. A lot of great questions, guys. Let me see. Oh, my cam is out of focus. I don't know, guys. It looks focused to me. Um, whatever it is, though, I got to stick with it. Because last time people told me I was dropping out, and then I saw the playback, and it was perfect. So I think it might be different depending where you are. So, um... But I'll tell you, I'm going to get an encoder, I think it's called, and I'm going to figure all that out. It's going to be a little bit seat of the pants with the lives until I figure out the technology. But I will. I will. I will. I took someone's advice who said to restart my phone before I, I did it. And you guys, you should see me. Like, I have the funniest setup. I mean, it's actually decent. I have a... Uh, condenser microphone down here so hopefully this sounds good which is really the most important part do you really want to see this face right I have one of those what I call an influencer box it's this white box and it's all folded together and you slide it back and then it telescopes up and there's a light on it and your phone hangs just beneath it and then from the bottom comes another stock that bends out so that you can do overhead shots. And I think it's made for people that do like makeup tutorials and, and that kind of stuff. But it's absolutely brilliant for this. But um, I sort of, I'm very self deprecating about being an influencer. If you hear me use that term, it's not me being like, oh, I'm an influencer. It's me kind of poking fun at myself. And then I also have a big light. See it, my glasses? One of those, um, what do you call it? A ring light, right? So you got a flat light here, ring light there, a condenser microphone here. I'm reading your questions on my MacBook Pro here that I bought to edit these YouTube videos you guys all see. And then sleeping over here is my iPad Pro. And I'm drinking my La Ville Ferme Rosé wine. Very nice.
So Wolverine has no dedicated pen stores in the entire state of Michigan. That's terrible. Um, I would I would check out. Do you follow um, Atlas anywhere? He's on Instagram. I, I don't know if he's on Facebook, but real nice kid. Real Brendan, really nice fellow. Shouldn't call him a kid. But um, I love dealing with him. So let me see what else you guys have here. Are Pelican M1000s worth the money? Yes. Yeah, I don't own one right now, but I've written with them several times. Anytime I go to a pen show, I get my hands on one. I'm sure I'll break down and buy one eventually, but um, they're brilliant. Pelicans are brilliant. They're really good pens. They're slightly... <laughs> see, see with me, you get the positive and then you're going to get the other side. They're slightly... Almost too perfect. It's sort of the difference between driving a... A Lancia or a... Um, an Alfa Romeo and driving a, a Mercedes or a BMW, right? Mercedes and BMWs are perfect machines... They run well until they just die <laughs> randomly on the highway. But set that aside, they're very precise. Whereas Alfa Romeos and Lanchas and other Italian cars feel slightly unhinged. And they have a bit more passion. Now you could argue that the German cars are better. But the Italian cars, uh, yeah, the Italian cars sometimes are a bit more fun. Pelican is a bit like a Mercedes. They're so precise. They're very consistent. They're not unhinged. Something like, um, how, how do you say it in English, you guys? Pinider? I always want to pronounce it funny because it's an Italian brand. But like a, like a pen like that. So that's the only negative. I feel that way about the 823 too, by the way, guys. I feel like it's this fantastic pen, but it's slightly too perfect it needs something a little wacky about it like a wet noodle nib or something which would be anti-823 but but something like that you get now you know you get that on a mump line gyptomania so that sort of contradicts my whole point but maybe that's the uh proof in the pudding so to speak let me see guys i'm trying to keep up on your questions here a lot of great conversation going back and forth, which I really like. Okay. Well, you guys are talking amongst yourselves. Let me do a little show and tell, shall we? I haven't brought this out in a while. See, this is a perfect example of what it's like when your collection gets kind of large. Um, have you guys, you guys remember this one, right? You want to do an experiment? This has probably been sitting in its case for, I don't know, what do you, maybe three months, two months? I'm a little afraid of this pen, you know, it's a lot of pen. Let's see if it writes right out of the box, shall we? The way a Kaveco Sport does, and they do. By the way, I love these. Claire Fontaine with the top flip. Great for when I do videos, you guys. You see, like, all this is like me writing for videos. By the way, see this? Jin Hao. It's for a video. I did Jin Hao video. It's back. It's reverse for you guys. Sorry about that. I did the Q&A video. Here's your questions written out. The Q&A video. All right, so let's see, shall we? Let's do a little experiment with the Platinum Kanazawa. We'll do it in real time, you and me, shall we? Come on, don't let me down. Oh, look at that, you guys. Oh, yes. Are you proud of it as I am? Look at that. Claire Fontaine paper, first time out of the box, a couple months. That, my friends, is a good fountain pen. Oh, you know, I posted it. I really probably shouldn't post it. They say you can post it, but you probably shouldn't. I can't help it. I 
can't help it guys I'm a poster I guess what my next video is about you guys want to know what my next video is about on Thursday at noon posting should you post a pen and guess where I stand I'm a reformed poster now. I think you shouldn't post pens. And it's one of those things where if you're going to be intellectually honest and consistent, you have to follow your opinions to their rightful conclusions. And my opinion goes to don't post. However, I, I enjoy posting, but I think you shouldn't. I think it's bad for your pens. And I think a pen that can't be posted, it's different. Like a Lilliput. Or even a Kaveco Sport. But watch my new video and let me know in the comments whether or not I am full of baloney. Let me see what we have here, guys. I want to make sure I'm attending to all of your questions. Matt Swanson says, I came in late tonight. Did I already discuss what I do for a living? I don't think I did, my friend. And I'll tell you what I do for a living, but I need to be vague. So, I think you guys know Hemingway Jones is not my name. It's my nom de internet. And the reason is, I like to have a little bit of separation between my online life and my personal life and my professional life. So I'm a senior vice president of a bank and that's what I do. So I'm in commercial lending. I finance a lot of businesses, a lot of real estate. I do a lot of interesting things in the banker world, which also allows me to use fountain pens every day. And that's why you always hear me talking about signing mortgages and signing documents and things. That's what I do. But, um, I like to keep a little bit of separation, so. Ian, hey Ian, how are you? Ian Noll asks, are live streams going to be a thing going forward? Yes. Yes, they're going to be a regular thing on the channel, guys. I'm not sure when I'm going to do it because I'm really um, conflicted. I, I need to do it when I can do it, but I also don't want to leave out Europe and Asia, right? So I don't I'm not sure how to do the schedule. I um my daughter goes to bed when I started this session, but that's a terrible time for Europe. So I might try to switch it up, but I'd also like to have it at a set time so you guys can rely on it. So I'm gonna work that out, but you will see more me live in the flesh. Uh, Pompadour says, I've never been a poster, but that could change depending on the pen. Yes, well, if you get a little plate, you'll be a poster because you're not going to write with it otherwise. Or a, um, a Pilot E95S. You, you, you definitely need to write a post that unless you have the hands the size of a Ken doll, <laughs> you know? Uh, unposted pens look naked to me. That's a great comment, and I think there's some truth to that. Definitely some truth. Um, Al Sakali says he would have sworn I were a New Yorker. Really? I don't think I sound like a New Yorker, but maybe. Hey, it's New England and Philadelphia. I jumped right over New York. Uh, Robin Allen says, I notice your subscriber numbers are climbing pretty well. Obviously, we're enjoying your content. Well, that's good news, to be honest. Um... I didn't realize that. I'm going to have to take a look and see how many subscribers I have. Actually, I can see it from here. I have 3.16. That's great. Yeah, it's fantastic. I had 250 when we started this back last August. So I'm, I'm psyched, guys. I'm just, my goal is just to keep making content that engages you, inspires you, and continues giving you inspiration to keep writing to open yourself up, to look for the narratives in your inner monologue, to make yourselves better, to lead broader, more interesting lives. That's my goal. 
<laughs> Joe says I'm too tame to be a New Yorker. Well, Joe, cut me off in traffic and you'll see. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Matt Swans, I'm grateful you're so active in the comments of your videos. Thanks, Matt. I'm going to keep that up as long as I can. It's getting more and more difficult, to be honest, because I do work at the bank like 50 hours a week. And then I have a five and a half year old daughter who takes up a lot of time and every moment of it is magic, as you imagine. And, you know, various other things. But the point is, I want to engage with you guys. For me, pen is pen. For me, fountain pens are like an academic pursuit. I'm trying to learn as much as I can from you guys and impart as much knowledge that I gain from you guys back to you guys. So I want it to be this sort of self-fueling circle where I learn from you, I make videos, I pass it to an even wider audience. Sorry for hitting the mic. Um, that's the goal of all of this and the best way to do that is by spending a lot of time in the comments. And plus, you guys are interesting. You have a lot to say. And you have some excellent perspectives of things that I don't think of. That's why I say I don't mind when people disagree with me. If people were like, oh, that's a great list, Hemingway. You're the best. You know, it's like, yeah, thanks. I do appreciate that. That's fantastic. But it's also great when someone's like, oh, you know, I probably wouldn't have picked a Caveco Sport. I think the... The Lamy Safari would have been better there, or what have you. So it's all good. I, I just I just enjoy it. The trolls I could do without. We do get those from not from time to time. But far fewer than TikTok, I'll have you know. Matt Swanson asks, how do I feel about Narwhal? The original was my first pen. Love the aesthetics and the nib is not ideal. Well, Matt, I'll tell you how I feel about Narwhal. I've never owned one and I have one right there in a box that I haven't opened yet. So, um, I'm looking forward to opening it. It's for promotion on TikTok, so I'm going to fulfill that obligation. And then um, you also do a deep dive and, and give a very long, comprehensive review here at YouTube, as I do. So, um, I can't wait to dig in. The one thing I really love about that particular line of narwhals is it's called a skookle. And some of you might know that, being from Philadelphia, the Schuylkill is a river that runs through Philadelphia. Philadelphia is at the um, meeting place of two rivers, the Schuylkill and the Delaware. And the Delaware, of course, is the river that Washington crossed during the Revolution. The Schuylkill was painted by Wyeth. That's the biggest thing I can think about it. So here's something interesting to me. So Skoo Kill is Polish and Kill means river. So it's the Skoo River. So if you say the Skookle River, you're actually saying the Skoo River River. So there we go. Confluence. The confluence of two rivers. Thank you, Michael. Hey, Brett Cody. How are you, my friend? Ever had a Conid? I'm so curious about them. I have not. I'm sorry to report. I'm trying to get my hands on as many pens as I can. Naive Tay from 1972 or Naive Tay72 says, How do I like sailor pens? I have a pirate's life for me and a medium nib. Brilliant pen. Good choice. I have a 1911L. It's brilliant. Its nib is very similar to a uh, Pilot 823 for about $100 less. But it has a converter, so it's not quite Pilot level, but it's close. Excuse me. It's close. It's knocking on Pilot's door. 823. But it's a fantastic pen. Very well made. It's a nice feel to it. I like it. Um... Brett Cody says, side note, Andrew Wyeth was an absolutely brilliant painter. Indeed. Wyeth is one of my favorites. I, um, I spent quite a bit of time at the Brandywine Museum when I was younger. And um, quite a few there. So, Wolverine. Oh, Wolverine's talking to Naivete. Okay. I'm going to stay out of your... I'm going to stay out of your conversations, okay? I thought it was pronounced... According to Stephen Brown. No, John. Um, Stephen Brown is... I don't know who Stephen Brown is, by the way. 
I'm sure he's a very nice fellow, but you might want to ask him whether or not he's from Philadelphia. It's Schuylkill. And the reason is, it was released at the Philadelphia Penn Show one year. So they named it after the river. Which is very nice. Oh my gosh, Navy Vet. <laughs> I was doing his naive day. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Forgive me. That is really, really embarrassing. Um, I don't have the best eyes. I think you can tell. Um, but thank you for your service, and I'm really sorry. But... Um, yeah, I get it now. It's absolutely brilliant. Sometimes I read these things fast. I mess them up. So forgive me. Is Stephen Brown the, the Schuylkill guy? Is he like the normal fellow? Because I don't know who he is. Um, I'm just getting to know some of the pen makers, which is really fun when you get like the in inside story from folks. Is Schuylkill Dutch? I thought it was Polish, but whatever it is, kill means river. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. So Stephen Brown is um, S-B-R-E Brown. I don't know who that is. Um, he's on YouTube. Very cool. Um, he gave it a Dutch pronunciation I can't remember. Yeah, but he's, he's Dutch, right? He's going to pronounce it the right way. You know, It's from Philadelphia. Where are you? One thing you're not going to get is correct pronunciations from Philadelphians, myself included. Have you, have you been paying attention? Um, but I can assure you, it's the Schuylkill River. So, um, if he does a pen channel, I probably won't watch him because I don't like to watch other pen content. Just because I want to, um, I don't want to be influenced, I want to do my own things. So... Uh, Wolverine saying Steve Brown is one of the better pen reviews on YouTube. That's cool. I should probably check him out, but I'm just not going to because I don't want to be influenced. I want, I want this thing of ours to stay pure. Do you know what I mean? So um, I will keep it. I, I keep out of other people's channels except for Goulet. I watch Goulet's um, pen show. Uh, what do you call it? His podcast, which I really enjoy, but I do skip over a lot of the personal stuff. And I just get to the pen reviews and the new things that they're releasing and whatnot. I like his company. I like him as a person. And um, is the fellow named Drew who does it with him? Seems very nice, very knowledgeable. I learn a lot from those guys. But I never heard of Stephen Brown. So, And he's a doctor, somebody's saying. So I never heard of him. But I'm sure he's great. Ah. <sighs> I've ever tried a pen by Leonardo Ficciana, Italiana. Heard high praise on the fountain pen subreddit. I have not. I have not got my hands on one. But if I ever do, I'll post it right here, guys. Believe me. Believe me. Pat Wagner says it is true. Yeah, I thought so. They're really good. They're really entertaining. I just don't like the personal stuff. I just don't have time for it. I watch them a lot when I'm at work. Fridays for me are an office day where I'm doing a lot of like answering emails and um, crunching numbers and things. And I love putting YouTube on in the background. And I often work from home on Friday. So that's when I put on the Goulet Pen Show. And sometimes I'm a week or two behind. But it's, um, it's really good stuff. Really good stuff. Oh, so this Stephen Brown follows into Stoicism. It seems like we have a lot in common. I'm a big fan of Stoicism as an as a um, an idea, not necessarily one I pursue, but one I like to talk about. So very interesting. Leonardo Momento Zero fountain pens are comfortable. Very good. John Lopez, who contributes quite a bit to this channel. Thank you very much. Yeah, you know what, guys? I mean, there's probably a whole bunch of people out there that do pen reviews. And I've been just terrified of, of watching them because I just don't want to be affected by them. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like um, I was in bands back in the 1980s and I never listened to what the other bands were playing. 
because I wanted our stuff to be really pure. Maybe I'm crazy. Wolverine's reading a bunch of Stoic philosophy. Um, I'm a big fan of Epictetus myself. Maybe we should do a sub-channel. What do you guys think? Um, Waffle says, I don't watch other pen videos mostly because they seem boring. Thankfully, your videos are the opposite. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. I do. I don't ever want to be boring. That would be my biggest fear. If I ever got boring, I hope you guys would let me know. I don't ever want to be tedious. So, hey, Ichiro, how are you? Nice to see you. It's always nice to see your avatar in my stream or on my comments. I always know you're going to have interesting stuff to contribute. Thank you very much. <laughs> H.A.R. cured me of philosophy. That's good. You're clever. So Pat says that Brian Goulet has educated me about fountain pens. His channel has been helpful. He has a very nice way about him. Um, I really like their channel. The only limitation is they tend to talk about the pens that they're around often, which are the ones they sell. So they don't often speak about things like Mont Blanc or some other brands that they don't carry. Um, that's the only limitation, I guess. I kind of wish I had a warehouse, though. Right? I mean, it must be great if you want to do content and you could just walk back in the warehouse and pull out a pen and just talk about it. And you would know about it because you'd listen to what customer service says about it and everything else. That's going to be brilliant. And also they have that nice studio, which would be nice. This is my study. This is where I work. So, John Lopez asked, why be doing more quotes from movies or books? Like the Roy Batty quote from Blade Runner. Yeah. I, I put little Easter eggs in my videos, guys. I don't know if you catch them, but a lot of times when people write, they write very generic phrases, and that always bugs me in the typewriting world. Um, I have typewriters, too. So somebody will try out a typewriter, and they'll do, like, um, the brown dog jumps over the fence or a fox is in there or something. I forget what it is. I kind of wish I would just... Do something crazy, like type something original. It's crazy, right? So when I write with a fountain pen, I like to use movie quotes or some Shakespeare quote that I have committed to memory or something. I think it's um, pretty, it just mixes things up. And I like to put those Easter eggs out there just to see if anyone notices. Um, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I did a TikTok once where I typed out, it was on a typewriter, and I typed out the speech from... Um, uh, Bly Manor about the one ghost and I used the music from that scene and only two people out of um, like 50,000 picked it up so it's fun though Robin says it almost feels like we're trying to let connect a couple of our favorite youtubers he's quirky and silly watch one of his disassembly line videos where he takes apart pens in a Scottish accent this is Stephen Brown again um, yeah maybe I, I will I just you guys, I mean, you want me to be an original, though, right? That's the only thing. Um, I just... Well, I mean, he probably does something entirely different than I do. So, I don't know how much effect it would really have on me. So. Sometimes you can't help being yourself, right? I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. So... I have a lot of new stuff coming out, you guys. A lot of good reviews. I have a lot more ideas. That's the other thing. I find, and correct me if I'm wrong, feel free to chime in right now, but I find that you guys who frequent this channel, you tend to like ideas more than reviews. So if I put up a review, it seems to get less attention than an idea. So something like, should we post pens? I'm assuming would do better than the review of a Pelican M200 or something. Am I right about that? Even if you're watching the playback, let me know. I'd be curious um, what you guys think. So, um, yeah. And also with me, I often think of things in broader terms rather than straight up reviews. 
Um, Daddy doesn't like S.E. Brown. Is he? He's boring, is he? I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know any of these people. I'm at a loss. I'm new here. So, uh, so I'll keep trying to give you guys really good, interesting, stimulating content. That's what I'm trying to do. I will always do reviews because I do get interested when I do a new pen. I have some new reviews coming out I think you guys are really going to like. One of them is different. It's not one that I interacted with a lot in the past. And I was very happy to get my hands on one. Pat appreciates ideas and doesn't mind reviews. And you're the only you. You're just doing fine. Thank you. I would imagine that whomever S.C. Brown is, he probably has 10 times, 20 times more attention than I get on YouTube. So I'm sure he's a very successful fellow. Janet says, I really enjoy learning more about the inks you use, your favorite pens, and anything from your journals. I wish I could share more journal stuff Janet, it's hard because how do you just open a journal and start reading? Now, some of the travel journals I could probably do that with. Um, I thought of I thought of reading some of my entries before, during, and after 9-11, but it felt too raw and wrong. So I won't. But maybe maybe something personal like when my daughter was born or something I could do that could be fun so maybe I'll try to find an entry I could share um, Ichiro says he's losing interest in reviews as my purchasing tapers off yeah well the thing is guys and this could be a this could be a YouTube all right this may be a YouTube if we only do reviews, then all we're about is buying stuff, right? If all you get from Hemingway Jones is, this is the Lamy Safari, this is why you should buy it, this is why you shouldn't. This is the Lamy 2000, this is the uh, Pelican M600, this is the Visconti, why you should, why you shouldn't. It's all about buying. It's all about consuming. Is that who we want to be in 2022? Do we just want to look at pens and writing and journaling as consumption as to whether or not we should plow down, plow down, plunk down another $200, $300, $500. By the way, I just bought a Mont Blanc 146 today, so I feel a little hypocrite, hypocritical speaking like this, but I, I felt the need to disclose this. But anyway... Do we want to have the full focus and the sole focus of our channel on buying and consuming pens? Now, however, just because you review something doesn't mean you're going to buy it. It gives you an insight into something you may or may not use. And plus, you might be gifted it. You might find it. You never know how you come across pens. But still, I feel like for this to be a fully-fledged hobby, there has to be a point of view to it. We have to be going somewhere with this. It's, it's about incorporating pens into your life, into making yourself a better person through writing, through journaling, through just the idea of being conscious of your choices, whether it's a fountain pen or whether or not you buy a car or where you're going to spend your summer vacation or what's your next book you're going to read. It's being mindful of your choices. I think that's more important than reviews. Am I crazy? Maybe I am. Well, let's see what Robin Allen thinks. I absolutely agree. I'm staying away from Instagram because it feels like marketing. Yeah, it's a good point. Instagram does feel like marketing. I mean, there's almost links on every post where you can buy something. Um, yeah, Goulet Pen Videos, they talk about stuff in their shop. Sure, I mean, it's a job for them, too. And it's also what they're around. So it's hard to begrudge them. They're, they're really nice fellows, but, but I get what you're saying. Aaron says, I love my MB-146. I found a vintage one before the unification of Germany. Brilliant. Good for you. That's fantastic. Did I ever share? I never shared my East German pen with you guys. Um, it's out of, out of touch right now, but I'm going to do something with that soon. 
Terry Horn. Hi, Terry. Nice to see you. Reviews have their place. But I'm interested in a pen. Currently, it's a Pilot Custom 823. I will go back and check out reviews. Well, Terry, did you check out my review? Because I reviewed the Pilot Custom 823. And my idea was, is this pen too perfect? Can a pen be perfect? We got into Platonism. We had a lot of fun with that. So uh, check it out. Let me know what you think. Review videos never really make me stop and watch. Gotcha, Terry. You know, I wish I could do this. I don't know how to do this. Look, here's my review for the Pilot Custom 823. Just click here. I can't do that. Sorry, guys. You'll have to find it. But it's, it's out there. It's only a few weeks back. Robin says, not to belabor a point, but it's the things other than reviews that attract my attention. Well, that's good to hear. I mean, I will do some reviews. Um, I do get my hands on quite a few pens, and I want to share them with you guys. But there's going to be an overarching idea as well. It's not just going to be about the pen. Pat says, I know so little about fountain pens. I don't know why they should be cleaned. I learned from Brian Goulet. Well, that's a good point. I mean, it's a good thing to learn, so I'm glad. I'm glad you learned that. Um, Joe Colucci, been meaning to do this. Thank you for introducing me to fountain pens. I've been suffering from arthritis for a few years now. Haven't been able to write. These things let me write again. Thank you. Joe, that's wonderful to hear that. I'm glad I could inspire you even in a small way. And it's such, such great to hear. I hope you are doing okay. It's not easy. I have a bit of numbness myself um, from abusing my body, rock climbing and martial arts for many years. So I actually have trouble writing now too, but um, I'm hoping to fix that. Um, I know arthritis isn't easy. So I wish you all the best with that, my friend. I really do. I'm gonna look at some of your other questions here. Okay, I'm not crazy, that's nice. Ooh, Wolverine says a lot of fountain pen reviewers don't even write with the pens they own. So that's a really interesting um, concept, right? And I think there's probably some truth to that. But I'll tell you this, you guys. I live with pens. When I, um, right before I review one, I carry it around for weeks and really try to get to know it as well as I can. I make it my number one pen for a while. And sometimes right off the bat, you know it's awesome. And sometimes you know it's, it's not so good. And one of the things I wanted to speak about at some point is how to break in a nib. You know when you get a nib that's a slow starter and doesn't want to go? Um, there's a couple techniques you can use that really aren't intrusive and are fairly easy for anyone to do. And you can, you can get a nib to be a bit more flowy. Flowy. I'm going with flowy. So, yeah, Wolverine has some issues too, and he's doing a great job, you know, writing and recovering and, and everything else. We've spoken quite a bit together about that, which is great. I love hearing you guys. I, um, I'm inspired by all your stories. I really am. And it's what makes this channel great, I think. I feel like we're a circle. We're a small group. It's, um, you know, we few. We, we, we happy few. We band of brothers. If I can be so pretentious as to throw that out there. You know, that's probably a good note to end on. A little Henry V, a little Agincourt. I think it's probably a good time for me to say farewell. It's Sunday night, 9.30. I'll be asleep within an hour. And I want to spend a little time with my wife. But I do want to say to you guys that this is absolutely lovely. I appreciate how warm you've all been. And welcoming for me on here this app is a little scary to be honest it took me a long time to get any attention at all you can look back and see there's quite a few videos and I'm really happy that I'm able to share so much with you guys it means a lot to me um, I value each and every one of you and all of your contributions to this channel you guys make this channel great and I really really appreciate it and on that note I'll see you all further up the road. Take care.